Developers around the world use various programming languages to write the software you use on a daily basis, whether that's the website you're viewing this video on, or your go-to game when you're killing company hours in the bathroom. In this video we'll be going over Stack Overflow's most popular programming languages to see what they actually do. First of all we have the language of the web, JavaScript. This language is often laughed at by Boomer developers that remember the poor design decisions that were implemented into the language. However, JavaScript is now dominating the industry when it comes to developing slick user interfaces, robust web servers and cross-platform applications for mobile and desktop. Ever since the introduction of an improved standard of JavaScript in 2015, we've seen the JS community grow and prosper. Although it's not all good news, just be prepared to learn a new JS library every single day. HTML is a markup language which allows you to create a basic web page. For the most part, it lets you create boring looking headings, paragraphs, lists, buttons and input fields. But HTML is like that one kid in class who wouldn't survive school without their friends. HTML's closest pals are JavaScript and CSS. CSS is what saves websites from looking like this to looking like this. It's got a very simple syntax which empowers developers to create beautiful websites. SQL is a declarative query language that allows you to interact with the database through English-like syntax. It's simple yet powerful. If you ever need to create, read, update or delete items from a database, then you'll most likely be using SQL. Python, not the most performant language. Yes, it's slower than some of the other languages out there, but its beginner-friendly syntax has made it the cool kid on the block. Many schools and universities use it to introduce students to programming, and this has helped it overtake Java, c -sharp, and PHP in the last three Stack Overflow surveys for the most popular language category. And truth be told, its performance is not a concern thanks to the powerful machines we have today. Python is a general purpose language, so you can do almost anything with it, but it's mostly used for tasks related to data science and machine learning. This object-oriented programming language came to popularity in the late 90s when programs were written for a specific operating system. Java introduced the JVM which abstracts away the underlying operating system to create a predictable environment for programs to run in. This led to the wide adoption of Java since you could literally write code for any system. Oh, and Java has garbage collection built in. Although Java dominates a lot of the industry, people are falling out of favour with it due to its verbose syntax. Even Google acknowledged this and added support for Kotlin to create Android applications. You can think of Bash as a command line interface to interact with the underlying operating system. Effectively, any command that you can run in the terminal can be used to create a script, so if you're familiar with working in the terminal, it won't be difficult to pick up other parts of the Bash language. It should be noted that Bash is a Unix shell, so it won't work on Windows natively, but there are similar alternatives for Windows like PowerShell. C Sharp is a popular choice for developing enterprise applications. It powers the most loved framework out there, .NET Core. It's used in a number of applications, but it was originally invented to be a better Java and to push the .NET initiative. C Sharp shares a very similar syntax to Java. In fact, James Gosling considers it to be an imitation of Java, with reliability, productivity and security deleted. PHP is probably the most used but most disliked by its industry. More than 75% of today's websites use PHP and the most popular CMSs are powered by it. However, that doesn't mean it's particularly liked. For years now, people have been calling for it to die, but so far it's standing the test of time. PHP is a general purpose programming language, however, it only really rose to fame due to its popularity for server-side scripting. One of the most powerful languages on this list, if you want to develop AAA games, graphic software, embedded system software or other applications that require fast performance, then you'll benefit from knowing C++. Just bear in mind though that with great power comes, um, great patience? Not only do you get error messages that might as well be hieroglyphics, you have to manage your own memory. For any new programmers out there, memory management essentially means when you declare a new variable to store some data in memory, you've got to make sure to release that at some point in your program to avoid memory leaks. TypeScript is just a superset of JavaScript which includes built-in static types, interfaces, generics and more features that you'd expect to find in a typed language like c -sharp. But truth be told, using strong types within large applications is so useful for a number of reasons and that's why I personally love it as well. C is the father of so many of the languages we use today. It's very similar to C++ in the sense that it's extremely powerful, so it's used in many of the things C++ is also used in. In fact, C++ was built on top of C, almost as an incremental change to the language. 
C was originally created to be portable between different operating systems since assembly language is tied to specific processes. However, C lacks a lot of commonly found features in popular object-oriented programming languages, which can be a pain at times, but you can still find ways to do things like polymorphism if you need it. Ruby was developed with the philosophy to get more done with less code. This led to a large community and the most popular project by far was Ruby on Rails, which is still one of the most used frameworks till this day. Although many popular sites use the framework, not everyone is a fan of its convention over configuration ideology. This means that Rails offers you a lot out of the box to get you up and running, but not everyone is fond of this. There's a lot of magic happening behind the scenes, and so it may feel like you're fighting the framework at points. But hey, it's got gorgeous syntax, it's got a massive community full of thriving gems, and it pays well. Go has been gaining popularity over recent years. It's most commonly known for its performance metrics and ease of use for concurrency via the help of Go routines and channels. However, Go is slightly different to other languages derived from C in the sense that there's no real approach for inheritance, rather Go uses functional composition. The idea here is that instead of creating a base class to help you define characteristics of child classes, you can instead compose multiple functions to define some behaviour. Assembly was introduced to map machine code instructions into human readable code. As you only need an assembly to translate opcode into executable binary instructions, assembly is highly performant if programmed correctly. Assembly is written an instruction at a time and the code works by manipulating data with memory and CPU registers. Assembly often results in smaller and faster code if written correctly, and so it's still used in parts of industry. Swift was introduced to the public by Apple in 2014 with the clear motivation to make iOS development a better experience, and in the words of Craig Federighi himself, We had to ask ourselves the question, what would it be like if we had Objective-C without the baggage of C? Apple made a clear effort here to make the new language more performant in addition to a host of other benefits compared to Objective-C. Swift is also one of the most loved languages, so don't be surprised to see it make an appearance in other paths of development too. Another fan favourite is Kotlin. It allows you to write code concisely whilst being fully compatible with the JVM, and so Google were very interested in integrating Kotlin support for Android development. Developers also appreciated this change, which may be the reason why Kotlin is very popular in industry today compared to just five years ago. Google has also stated that Android development will become increasingly Kotlin first, so if you're looking to get into native Android development, Kotlin should be a no-brainer to start coding with. R is a multi-paradigm programming language and offers an environment for statistical computing and graphics. It has data visualization and graphics capabilities built in, and due to its wide variety of statistical and graphical techniques, R is commonly used in academia and mathematical fields. VBA allows you to automate processes in the Microsoft Office suite. It does this by responding to events with procedures which is really useful for integrating custom functionality to your existing Office documents. Since the introduction of Swift in 2014, we've seen the decline in popularity for Objective-C, which is what was traditionally used to develop apps for iOS. The majority of programs still have a large portion of Objective-C in their codebase, so it may be beneficial to be somewhat familiar with it. Objective-C is still reliable and much more stable than Swift. In addition to this, Objective-C integrates seamlessly with C++, so it's evident that it's not disappearing overnight, although it's clearly not used as much now. Scala is a general purpose language built for the JVM which enables developers to build programs using functional and object oriented concepts. Scala can be used as a drop in replacement for Java since it can utilize existing Java libraries and tools. It's yet another attempt to make a better Java by employing concise code patterns and although the growth in popularity has remained stagnant in recent years, well known companies have adopted it and many Scala developers get compensated better than their peers. Rust is a low-level language designed to be fast and have safer memory management compared to other low-level languages like C or C++. Rust ensures that your code will be safe from segmentation faults through the help of ownerships and borrowing, which behave similar to a read-write lock. Dart was designed by Google to be compatible on all platforms. It can be transpiled into JavaScript to run in the browser, or you can run your code to create cross-platform mobile applications, which is what Flutter is doing right now. Flutter is powered by Dart and is expected to be the main way to develop native apps for Google's new cross-platform OS, so you can expect Dart to gain more popularity as time goes on. 
Elixir is a functional programming language built on top of the Erlang virtual machine. The motivation for this was that Erlang had a great track record for fault tolerance, concurrency and scalability. Elixir structures your software using isolated processes which means that an entity in the system can fail without affecting other processes. This focus on fault tolerance and distributed architecture has led to some companies to adopt Elixir to help them scale more efficiently. Clojure is a functional programming language which compiles to Java bytecode, giving it the ability to run wherever Java does. Clojure's ideology for handling states along with its concurrency primitives helps to simplify multi-threaded programming, allowing us to somewhat part ways with traditional methods for handling concurrency. Last but not least is WebAssembly, possibly the future of web development. It's designed to be an effective compilation target for low-level languages. Since WASM modules are compact binary formats, it's low time efficient and very performant. With WebAssembly already making an impact, you can expect it to make the web a much richer experience, especially for intense use cases where JavaScript has not done so well in. This was 25 languages in 10 minutes. If you enjoyed it and you're after more software-related content, then do the standard YouTube things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.